welcome to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 466. My name is John Morgan, and Cole Coffee is with me, but I'm just going to say it off the top. I don't know how long either one of us are going to be here right now, man. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Cole Coffee's about to walk out the door. I'm about to walk out the door. I mean, this is some rare occasions right here. All right, first and foremost, let's just say, it is late February in Las Vegas. I mean, it's late February everywhere, but in Las <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're just in Vegas. I don't know what month yeah, y'all's in, but not right sure now, it's where you late. guys are. Wherever you're listening from, it's like a leap year thing. Or something. I don't know what you're. It's late February here in Vegas. No, it is late February everywhere, but here in Las Vegas, it is 67 degrees right now. There is not. I mean, I'm looking outside of the uh, the uh, deluxe sky roof here at the Casa de Cold <laughs> Coffee here. What is a sky roof? I don't even know. I just like, what does that make sense? I had it custom made. I had it custom <laughs> it's made. It's a sky roof. No, uh, I'm looking outside, and, man, there is legit not a cloud in the sky. 66 degrees, 67, right around there. It's going to actually be 71 tomorrow on February 29th, leap year. Happy birthday to all those people who have that weird-ass leap year birthday. That has to be weird, right? <laughs> yeah, they're like, what, five? Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's goofy <laughs> should, when people make that 20, joke. But you're actually five. But I wonder, what do you do? Do you celebrate on February 28th I or would. March 1st? I would. Well, I guess yeah. Good point. March 1st, right? But that's weird because it's not even your month anymore. I mean, yeah. I know it's the whole. Oh, it's only every four years, so I'm five years old. Like I get that, but seriously, you got to have a birthday, right? Yeah. I was telling my wife, I was like, I don't really like celebrating birthdays. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? So it's yeah. just, I, I, it's not a big thing to me. But if I did have a leap year birthday, like February 29th. I would probably have a blowout. Like, if you only had a birthday, like, legit birthday once every four years, yeah. I'd probably just, like, go big every time. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Versus just, like, every, you know, it's just the, it's the same day on the calendar. Yeah. If I was February 29th, I'd, I'd go all out. I don't know what I would do if I do the 28th or, or, if, you do, or if you do the 1st. I think you do 28th because it's weird because technically it'd be March 1st. Yeah. But that's weird because it's not even the same month. Yeah. Weird. Just, yeah, yeah. who knows? Anyway, so 67 degrees like, right now, yeah. 71 tomorrow. So it's gorgeous. I mean, we're getting this beautiful spring weather early. It is it's incredible. It's going to chill out a little bit uh, next week. It's going to get a little cooler again. But for a couple of days, man, it is absolutely gorgeous. But here's what makes it extra special. <laughs> this is why the sun's brighter. Yeah, yeah, because normally by the time we get here to the Casa de Cold Coffee, because the journey is so far, once you, you get the, the grounds that you got to get through, That's it's a true. bit of a journey That's from true. the, the apex. maze, that maze, I, oh, I keep adding into it. It's crazy, know? man. You know, it takes a while to get through it. It's The sun's usually starting to go down a little bit, but today, I mean, we got out of the UFC apex in like record time. I mean, not a, uh, not a massive UFC Fight Night 238 card this week. We'll talk about it all and everything that happened there, but uh, they only brought us eight fighters this week. It's only a five-fight main card. I don't know why they decided on eight. I mean, the two that they didn't bring for the mat, uh, for the main card were Matt Schell and Steve Ursig. So it's two ranked flyweight. So my I'm, get, my guess is that a late shuffle, uh, late schedule shuffle. Yeah, because yeah. I think they were thinking initially probably that Tercios and. Uh, uh, Rosa's Jr. Yeah. maybe would be on yep, it. But yep, then yep. again, I was thinking when I didn't see him initially on it, I was like, okay, well, we just saw him. So, so there's no why reason have him again. why I have him again because I almost feel like that's happened before. Right, where they bring him in consecuative weeks. You're yeah, like, and we they're just, just like, interviewed you we last just week. just saw you. you know? yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking of something along those lines, but I, I imagine it was just a shuffle of, of some particular point because, yeah, I mean, both guys are, are decent guys and are decent talkers yeah. and, and they speak English for Christ's <laughs> sake. Like... <laughs> We would have appreciated that. It would have been good. You know? yeah, we, did, we did have a few uh, non-English uh, speakers today, so it made it. But, yeah, so we only had eight people, um, and it went pretty quick, man. They loaded everybody yeah. up. It, it went fast, and so we got done, and so so we got out of here. We did have some – I thought, you know, for a media day that wasn't necessarily the most anticipated of all time, we still had some, some pretty interesting interviews, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But shout-out to Las Vegas. Shout-out to the weather. Yes. If you happen to be in Las Vegas right now, I know you're feeling the same vibe right now. This is – this is a go outside kind of a day yeah. and uh, enjoy this this early little taste of spring. Dude, it's beautiful. It feels so good. All right, now I got the back doors cracked open. It's funny, even just the other day, a friend from Columbus was sending me pictures like they had snow, oh. like inches of snow. I'm like, yeah. dude, it's like spring's right around the corner. Like, what is going on? But right now, it legit feels like spring. I mean, I'm. I'm so happy about this, and it's just in time for the new rate hikes of our our, our gas companies and our energy companies. <laughs> is our electric bill going to go up too? Uh, I think they're uh, they're. I know the gas one is. The ga my gas was significant. You mentioned it, and I didn't even know there was a rate hike. And I got my bill huge. afterwards. It was and they're right, they're doing right now the the like a ten percent uh, like hike on the service or something like that, which is what they're voting on right now. And it's crazy because. 
get me, I'll, I'll go down the rabbit hole. So I start pulling up like stock things like, all right, what are the returns of these companies? And they're making mad profit. Like Southwest Gas, the holding company that did it, right. did like five or six billion of profit last year. But you want to raise it. That's what and, I don't get. And you look at the bill. And what's crazy about these things? Now we're going to go on the tangent. All right. Yep. <laughs> it's like how, and if anybody looks at their bill, they always have that thing this where. This is Utilities Futures uh, Roadshow. <laughs> Roadshow.com. <laughs> Half of them, a lot of the money they take is for them to build their infrastructure, to build out things, to future proof their right. things. That's what you're supposed to do with your revenue. <laughs> you don't start charging <laughs> the customers to build out and then you're just pocketing the revenue. But that, again, that seems to be the model that works. They have these commissions in place that are supposed to vote on whether they could do these sort of things. But I swear, well, one, these, you know, then now I go down the rabbit hole. Um, they're they're appointed by the commissioner, right. you know, which is a a legal position. So you know that somebody's getting some money, yep. you know, and you usually, depending on where they are, they're supposed to file, you know, whether um, they receive money for any of these particular companies. But all being said, you know, the 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 community's hurting, but for some reason, these rate hikes keep getting agreed. And I hate to just immediately say, "All right, motherfuckers on the board, like stop taking this money, stop doing whatever." These companies are making mad money, but they're forcing us. And, and just like you said, the bill's going through the roof. You see it every day, um, these crazy rates, you know, and these bills. I'm paying twice as much as what I paid last year for the same amount, if not less. Twice? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's it's gotten so bad. So, like, I do the equal payment thing um, just because it tries to even out the payments. Right, right. Just so you don't get any big. Just so you don't get the big one. Right. But then you see a lot of – what I see is these a lot of these older people that don't pay attention that they just want to get the bill and they want to be done. But mm -hmm. then they're getting – sent bills for three four hundred dollars and a lot of them are on like um uh, social security or whatever that takes the bulk but yet the company that's a monopoly out here has five yeah, we billion. have one choice yeah we have, we one, have choice. one choice you know granted there were some people that say that deregulation doesn't work but whatever we do live in a, mo a monopoly out here but when you have a company that is you know has the same revenue rates that they had the prior year or they actually built built from what it was year over year but the cost is going up for everybody else like it doesn't make sense that your revenue wouldn't drop but the reason it's not dropping is because they're raising it they're passing those losses off onto the customers and i don't get that whatever. i mean like you said we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this but i don't get that to me it's unfair like if they're making these kind of profits and, and it seems like there should just be li some kind of limit and i know that they're supposed you, to be if there was a limit i'm yeah. sure they just find a way to cook the books to yeah. say they weren't but if you're making like how can you especially for something that we have to have right. like you can't not have gas and you can't not have electricity yeah. you know what i mean so like how can you raise the rates if you're profitable if the company's failing like i kind of get it like yeah. if they go to the city or the county and they're like listen here's the problem we're doing the best we can here you can come look at what we're doing. Maybe we can streamline. But the bottom line is we lost $100 million last right. year. We got to make up this difference or we're right. screwed. Okay. Got it. But yep. if you're making record profits, and like, oh, by the way, we're making record profits, but uh, we need a little bit more because we got to build out some stuff. Yeah. Like, isn't it that – It doesn't make any don't sense. Don't you just reinvest the profits? Isn't that what yeah. you're supposed to do is reinvest the profits? That's kind of like what uh, – Wendy's, I guess Wendy's did a backtrack. I, I'm sure everybody by this point had seen the Wendy's thing go on viral when Wendy's they said they were going to do, do like surge pricing and all that kind of stuff. Where people are saying, okay, well, the cost of ingredients and things are going up for you because people are buying stuff, but now you want to charge more for that product just so you can maintain your level of profit. That's the same sort of deal, you know? So it's it's crazy. But what's nice about the, you know, I told you we went down the rabbit hole. Oh, because yeah. of the weather, we're able to keep the doors uh, open now. So now yeah. it's like, thank goodness, because we're getting a little bit of reprieve. Where, you know, people aren't having to put your heaters on. You aren't having to. Well, you might. You wouldn't put your heater I, on, I bro. You're like 58 <laughs> degrees. You're like, sweet. Still good. Dude, it was, still like, good. It was like 50 something the other day. And the sun was out. I was like, door open. <laughs> <laughs> I am ridiculous. I mean, you got uh, like them. You got like them. Andy Reid icicles just coming <laughs> off your, coming off your beard. I call and your them joycicles. Just, <laughs> just pure joy. Just pure joy. I'm like, yes, here. Oh yeah. So yeah, I know. I know. Uh, people tune into that and they hear us bitch about this stuff. But it's crazy. I mean, but I hey, think but it's, it's I'm a good... sure everybody's dealing with the same stuff. You and, can't and tell and me everybody's not it. feeling the pinch right now, and man. I, I, and, I, and, I, and I think you're absolutely right. And that's the thing I think that's just irksome is that, you know, the 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 inflation that we're currently feeling in the U.S., when we always talk about like, oh, hey, you're going to open up your wallet, you're going you're gonna to spend for this pay-per-view. 
those choices are a lot tougher now because yeah. all the costs of living are a lot higher. So it's just crazy when you see a company that's clearly um, making money hand over fist, then going back again and asking people to pay more for the, the basic service when you know that they're not feeling the, the crunch on their yeah. end, you know, and it's uh, it's just a little disheartening. But, you know, thank goodness, you know, we get to watch people beat the shit out of each other to, to feel a little better about ourselves. <laughs> and, <laughs> and on the bright side, let me just say for all of you guys out there working for major corporations, I know that you'll be able to trust in your companies to adjust your salary yes. for the current inflation level as they always do. Oh. So thankfully, you can just rely <laughs> yeah, on that. That's it. That's it. <laughs> God bless, God bless. All right, let's talk about some fighting. Before we get to this week, I did want to ask you your thoughts on last week. Talked about it a little bit on the and a half episode. Um, you know, obviously a big weekend last week. Uh, you know, maybe not the biggest shows, but it was fun for me. I ended up sitting down and watching 13 hours of MMA. Not yeah. sitting down. Saturday was fun, though. S- Saturday was just fun. Just like we said, morning fights and then evening fights. You there know, was just that, what, there was like just, a hour There was like an break. hour, about an so, hour. Like, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I loved it. And you know, because on a Saturday night, I want the fights to go fast, right? Like, I just want to keep everything there. But, like, on a Saturday afternoon, I'm kind of doing some yeah. other stuff. You know what I mean? So, it's like you got these little ebbs and flows. It's like, okay, we got a little break. Like, I will say this. I felt like the PFL pacing was better than it has been in the past. Like, I yeah. know I know they've heard the complaints. It we were sounded, at the beginning. So, people say, were saying that it was still kind of slowish towards the beginning. Like but they, then it got they, going. Well, it's because they were like fights. Like, the show started at this point. And this mm-hmm. is the difference of, like, a UFC broadcast. When the UFC says we're going to start at 5, the fights are right right then right. maybe five minutes later yep. there was like what 30 45 minutes of, of air time right. on the pfl before you got to the fights but once they got in the fights and once they got to like the the pfl versus bellator it was yeah. smoking oh fast. by the yeah the main was card was awesome. blazing so like, i mean it was great fights but yeah it was just just that initial thing i wish they would tighten that up a little bit because you know if you're starting a broadcast and you feel like the 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 your talents having to stretch for time you're just like why are we doing this? Yeah, you know, I like I don't want to watch thirty minutes of commercials and guys randomly talking. Like, let's get to the fights, yep. you know. Especially because it was a great card. Like, it was fun. you know, I, I just you know I I I didn't I don't understand why they don't you know tighten that up a little bit. I would agree, I, but I will say it was an improvement. So they deserve at least yes. some credit that it was better than it used to yeah. be. So I guess I want to get your a question. work in progress. Work then in progress. they had then they they're having technical issues. But granted, I mean like. This was a huge ask. I mean, it wasn't like they were doing this down the street in a, in a proven place where they knew, you yeah. know, everything was good. I mean, they were overseas in a new environment, you know, but there's going to be technical issues. And it was just – that was the only just slight blip. And granted, I give I give them credit, you know, like it's a tough environment. I'm not going to kick you when you're down. Right. But, you know, there were a couple of times they went to the guy, the betting guys and there was no audio. Right. You know, and you're just like, oh, like yep. did we not test this? Yep. You know, like shit happens. Sometimes just you Live might test broadcast. it and it's fine. Live broadcast. Like, as you see now more yep. than ever, you 100%. know, now working in the truck, like shit happens. and I, So I don't want to kick them down. But I felt like they made great strides to improve things. But – I will give them a little bit of a pass because it wasn't like doing a broadcast in New York where they've it's true it's, it's tried and tested and everything like they were they were expanding in an area over there but you know if you're trying to do more and more events over there you know maybe that's something that they'll learn from it Saudi Arabia learned from it the, the partners over there and it'll get better and uh, but yeah because top I mean they you could tell that they spent money to put this thing together you yep. know they they put money to promote it they put the great fights together it just I would give him a, a B plus. Yeah. I think I give him a B plus on the night. I agree. That's I think that's solid. I think that's yeah. fair. I think that's very fair because there is room for improvement. But yeah. they're 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 building from where they were. Yeah. So my question to you would be: After watching all that MMA, I think it's clear the three biggest stories were the three biggest fights coming in. I mean, yeah. I think we all knew the heavyweight fight, Hannah Fajeda, the big finish Ooh. of Ryan Bader. I mean, stunning finish there, and of course the main and co-main event of the UFC Mexico City, where we saw a Brian Ortega and Brandon Royval right. pick up very, very big key wins, very emotional wins, both comeback wins. You know yeah. what I mean? Both had to battle through adversity. So out of those three, which one do you feel like was? The biggest winner, or the biggest story, or takes the most momentum out of it. Like, which one did, did which one resonated with you the most? And would you declare the winner out of uh, out of those three? Uh, I would say I I think the Fajeda um, Bader fight went exactly well. I'm not going to say that's my winner, but I think that went kind of how I thought it was going to go. Maybe a little bit more mm-hmm. splashy, but I think if if there was somebody that's going to take momentum from that particular night, uh, I'm thinking probably Brian Ortega. You know, he battled back from some, you know, initial adversity. You know, that first round, it could have been done, you yep. know. But I think going back, I think a lot of people were had questions about him and 
how good he was still going to be. And I think some people, you know, expected him. I think I picked Yair in that one. I think a Wouldn't lot of people surprised. were just like, hey, the Yair's going to come in here and questions. just going to go over him. And then they're just going to say, yep, that's what we expected. Yep. Or Ortega, you had your time. But he came out there and was like, okay, he's not done. Like Roy Val Moreno, close fight, good action. I think he did do enough to, to get that nod. Yep. But I can definitely see where, um, you know, that sets up for some potentials. But in terms of, for me, the guy that's taking momentum and, and kind of saying like, okay, don't forget me. Here I am. What big other fights are, are next for me? I felt like he possibly maybe stole it for me just for the, in, in terms of like, I don't think people were expecting as much out of him that for what he was able right. to do and get that finish as opposed to like, I think people expect it and know that Roy Vell, yes, if he gets through Moreno, Hey, that sets up new possibility things. I think with the I mean, just look at the dude. I mean, like, I think you had been hard pressed to find a lot of people that said Bader's definitely going to get this done. So right. I think people expected. I think people were surprised that it was a one and done, like almost like one strike. <laughs> Twenty one seconds. Like, you know, like on. that was ridiculous. So if I had to pick the guy that left that night, probably on more people's minds as for like, okay, I need to pay attention to this guy again. It would be Ortega for me. I can't argue with that. I think that's. I think you, you make a solid assessment because you're right now. Now it potentially means a title fight with Ilya Taporia, who, oh by the way, seems to be all. I mean, his star is taking yeah. off. Right, this guy is on a rocket ship. You think especially Yair in Spain. was overlooking. Not, I wouldn't say overlooking, but Yair was so into Ilya. Like, I was like, bro, you got Ortega, and maybe part. Maybe that was still buying into that as well. I was like, man, that's good. That'd be a good one. That'll it, be a good it one. always does worry me a little bit when somebody's talking a little bit too much about somebody else. But Yair is that hot-tempered little yeah. dude, man. You know what but I mean? Like, that's he, it. like his temper was really. Bad. I was really surprised at how like. Like but what anywhere. was it? Put me was in the it Michael Bisping that he snapped at one time in the in the cage, like before the interview I be or something? Yeah, I mean, I, I, be I mean, he's he's got that. So you're right. Um, yeah, it did seem like that. Maybe he did, but that was just a great performance from Ortega. But um, and, and yeah, like I said, you, you're right. You laid out. I to me, man, and, and maybe I'm alone on this. But I thought Henan Fajera. The, the thing about it is, not only did Henan Fajera like earn himself a fight with Francis Ngannou, which we yeah. also look. You and I have been saying all along. Supposedly, yeah. Well. <laughs> The PFL says so. I guess so. See, I think that's the thing. I think that's why maybe a lot of people are hesitant because I'm – see it when it's on that contract. You know me. I, I think you and I have a nice balancing personalities, right, because I believe I'm a bit of an optimist at heart, and I believe you're a bit of a pessimist at heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> on stuff like this, I, I somebody's got to be. You right. Know? No, it's, that's true. you got to be. I mean, like, it's, it's just I think the it's nature just, of the sport. Well, I, mean, I think it's just naturally kind of who we are in yeah. these, you know, and it's especially with this sport and how we look at it. I, I tend to believe it's going to happen. And maybe that's why I'm thinking Hennon because – I'm taking it at its word that's going to happen. And I, and, yeah. and so you and I were already saying, you know, going into this, dude, if he wins, you have to give it to him, right? Then 100%. the PFL came out ahead of time and said, hey, we're just going to make this official. The winner, by the way, is going on to face Francis Ngannou, which makes all the sense in the world. I'm buying into it. But I think it's not only the fact that uh, he earned the right to fight him, but I believe – now. Now, granted, I know this probably wasn't the most watched pay-per-view of all time, and I'm not saying that this was, you know, a sports center top ten highlight or whatever. But with that performance, I know me personally, and I gotta believe if you're an MMA fan, I'm not saying the casual fan that doesn't ever watch. But you're, if you're an MMA fan, after that performance, aren't you interested in seeing him and Francis Ngannou? Because before we we said it. Who's Francis going to fight? Great they signed him. Yeah. No offense to anybody, but I don't see anybody out there that I'm really like, whoo, well, can't wait to see that. And now I do. With him, and I, I'm yeah. now I'm like, oh, I want to see that. Well, it's kind of what's funny because they were like, they were always like, Francis' fight's going to be the super series, the super fight series, the super pay per view series. Right. You know, so we kind of almost like when, you know, the expectations of maybe UFC 300, it's like, okay, you give me this title, you give me this thing. We all started thinking like, oh, what crossover? What what big fight are they gonna bring Fedor? in? Fedor, yeah, <laughs> Fedor. And it's like, oh no, we're just gonna bring the current champ of this right. thing. You know, we're gonna bring our heavyweight champion. I'm like, oh, okay, so it's a super fight with the guy that's just the champion. Okay, <laughs> so so it's like a title fight. So it's like a title fight, but it's not a title but fight. But it's not a title fight. <laughs> Um, that's so, so true. No, I, but I'm, I but am, didn't this didn't this elevate it? Oh, though? Yeah, I mean, as far yeah. as performance, I mean, it's incredible because you, you see that power, and you go, you got a guy that's going to be across the cage in Francis that has like that equal power, and there might be some that say, okay, well, everybody's always talked about Francis being the harder, the hardest hitter. Where does this guy clock in at, bro? You I, know, his he's got to be, and and I feel like every I think, time we I see think him, Hennon's more he's, athletic. I think he's, he's more, athletic. and he's getting 
better and better every time we see him. Yep. He gets scarier and scarier. And this one, we never got to really see how he would have to negate the wrestling because he negated it by just hitting him in his face yep. and then dropped it and then it was done, you know. But that just sheer power, I've granted every every time a punch, you know, you could Bader could take a punch this event and have it happen one way, he could take it the next event, yeah. and you never quite know. It's, it's right. hard to just say, like, wow, I've never seen Bader not be able to just shake off one strike before it sort of drops him. Right. Uh, so I will give credit to the power. I mean, you never you never quite know, but, man, I yes, in terms of am I excited to see the fight? 100%. But, you know, th- there's the part of me that's like, okay, well, if France was – I mean, granted, Francis does want to get ahead of himself. I think he's very, very focused. His biggest focus right now is the Anthony Joshua fight. But it's like, okay, if everybody's all on board, why don't you bring him into the cage afterwards when you do it all the time at other events? Why don't you bring him in for the face-off? He's right there. He literally walked past the cage to leave instead of walk him in. While the, the post-fight interview, you know, maybe maybe they d- called an audible and said no. Maybe he was just wasn't into it in the first place. Maybe he doesn't want to. In his mind, maybe he's like, I'm – focus on the my current fight which is boxing right now i don't want to go up there and do this circus sideshow but the pfl is like bro we've given you everything you're you know we talk about how francis is the right now even without fighting he's a promotional machine for them just by being and, and doing these other fights but it's like hey i'm sure they flew him out there i'm sure they gave him per diem so i'm sure they do whatever but why don't you bring him in there for some big face-off moment so did you see ali abdelaziz so ali abdelaziz dominance mma they manage uh henna fajeda and ali tweeted afterwards henna fajeda ko ryan Bader. pfl announced he's going to fight francis next they supposed to both guys will be in the cage square off nothing happened i will keep it at that so I, he so didn't elaborate they tried. so he said that they were supposed to face off right and they didn't. And he said, I'm just going to leave it at that. I, 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 f- I found that tweet very interesting, and I'm curious to know exactly what it meant. Yeah. Uh, um, because I, I don't know. You know, I mean, at I the saw, end of I the saw, day, it's not like they're going to force Francis to go in I there. Saw, Francis don't want to go in there, but it, maybe saw, they tried. I, I saw Francis had time to go talk to John Jones and yeah. rub him on his belly a little bit and say on he's looking a little big. So I, I don't know. I just – I wonder if it was a miscommunication. I wonder if it was – Francis Naganu is thinking about the promotion of his boxing fight, so he doesn't yeah. want to do MMA. Which, if that's all it is, that's fine. Or is it Francis playing a little game playing and saying, game. you know what I mean? Hey, I did a pretty good job negotiating that first time. I figured my, now I'm going to do a – you know, you know. I just – I wonder – I'm just curious. I just – I saw that tweet, and I haven't had a chance to talk to Ali about it. Um, you know, obviously, uh, it's been a couple of days, but um, I'm curious because it's it definitely stood out. Like, hold on. Yeah. He's there. This yeah. is the big fight. Where it's going to happen, and and we're not going to. I mean, the 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 PFL finals last year, bro. We we had, we faced off every fight. After yeah. every fight, we were bringing people in to face off, and now we got the super fight, and we don't do it. When's the fight? The eighth or the fourteenth? Uh, I think the eleventh, right? March eighth. Is that what it is? I mean, like the fights right around the corner. Um, I mean, maybe there's part of them that he's like, you know, let me get through this particular thing, and you know, maybe I need some time to recoup. I'm going to be counting all that money. That you know, Hen is yeah, gonna probably fight. have to defend the belt in the meantime. You know, like maybe there's a part of me that's like, let him fight another, and then we'll see. And it's like, wait, you said two million? No, nah, yeah. I'm good. I'll, yeah, sit I mean, I'll wait. wait. I'll, I'll wait. wait. I mean, uh, I would never say that. You know, France is never gonna duck away from anybody, but I don't think anybody's gonna be clamoring to try to rush in there and and be opposite of that dude. And you know, and and we always hate. You know. Uh, to a small degree, when you see these guys go in there, face off, and then the fight doesn't, you know, come for like five months, mm-hmm. six months. I mean, if there's a possibility, and let alone Francis is going to make mad money. If he doesn't want to fight for four, five, six months after that, I totally get it. So why why go in there and face off for no particular reason? Yes. But it's like, it's like, bro, just play along with the PFL. Like, they brought you there. They're paying you to be there. Just walk in there, even if the fight. Even if you have no intention of ever even fighting if you a have guy, no intention. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's exactly if it. If you have That's zero, exactly. if you know in the back of your head, there's no way I'm ever signing this play, contract. Play the game for him a little yeah. bit. Give him, give him that promotional thing. But dude, I'm telling you, it will be very striking. Francis is a huge man. Hennen is ginormous. Ginormous, dude. He's. Huge. I mean, when the, boy, seeing that like Bader. I mean, Bader. He's not the tallest guy. I mean, he's a decent-sized dude, but like seeing those two opposite is just, was just crazy. So, but like to see 
Francis in my head when I see Francis and Hen and Hennon's going to be the taller Bro, dude. La- I mean, like last year when I did, uh, there was like a press meeting in New York ahead of the finals with uh, Hen and Fajeda, and I was I was moderating it, and I was standing at a dais, and this man was sitting. I mean, it was a chair like a like a bar stool or something like that, so it's not like a low chair, but still a chair. And he's sitting down in the chair, and I looked over and I'm standing up, and he's still taller than me, six I- eight. I'm still looking up at him. That dude is a mom. Monster. I'm so. trying to see how how tall Francis is right now, but Hennon's six foot. Oh eight. yeah, he's, he's gigantic. I think Nagano's six four, I believe, which is crazy because he yeah. looks like an enormous dude. But like Hennon, Hennon's not going to make him look small. But you're going to see a size difference between the two of them, mm-hmm. you know, which is crazy. And then you got like you know a lot of people saying like Francis, he's been going so hard training boxing. He needs. He's gonna need to have to reset things right. and go hard on MMA before you try to get in there and and fight an it's, actual MMA. It's guy. not like uh. It's like well, my man had 25 years of experience in MMA, yeah. so yes, he's been focused on boxing. But it's like riding a bike. You know, it never yeah. goes away. You're right. He was still fine too. Like, and look, I don't think I know. You know, the fight when when he was hurt with Cyril Gone, where everybody gave him all the credit in the world. It was like, man, his wrestling was there. We never expected to see his wrestling. I'm just gonna say it right now. I don't think he takes down Hennon Fajeda. Like I just don't. I don't think so either. I, I think Hennon is is it's a, have to be a training with match. high level wrestling. Yep. You know, at ATT and is a big athletic dude. I don't think Francis takes him down. I think he dude. took Cyril down because Cyril. I mean, no, no disrespect to Cyril Gone, but I think Cyril's admitted his wrestling was yeah. no good. I mean, look what John. I mean, John Jones didn't even take him down. He just like leaned on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's crazy, and I feel like we've talked about this before. Whether it's still worth it for the PFL if Francis never act. If this fight never, yes. if it never does, because I mean, even if even if it doesn't, he's getting they're getting promotion. Say he does boxing and he makes bad money, and say he pulls off a magical moment and he's able to beat Anthony Joshua, he's never going to come back to the no. PFL as a fighter. But he can still lead PFL Africa, st- and there's still value there. And there's still, still a lot value of there, value right? there, right? So yep. like. It still, in a sense, could be a win for them. I we, mean, we've talked about it, but I'll just I'll just reiterate again because you're right. If you've listened to the show a lot, you know how where we stand. But I think it's becoming more and more clear. At least I, I believe it is. I mean, if they never have to cut him that big check, right? But they still get to use his name all the time. Right. Maybe he doesn't do a, a face off when he wanted to do a face off. But you, you know, I mean, there's definitely subtleties in there that it, I mean, Grant, this is us just reading into it. But yep. you know, maybe in his mind, he's already made that decision. You know. If if boxing if there's still the lucrative fights out there if there's still a rematch that could be with Tyson Fury after this one if there's other heavyweights that are trying to call him out there's no need for him to take the the further damage of an MMA and start going back in that train and just let him fine tune his boxing yep. and he could still be a spokesperson I just wonder if if we're reading too much to think that maybe he's in his mind's already like I'm not going to go step back into that cage until I'm ready to be an MMA fighter again. You know, I'm gonna, uh, I'll, st- uh, you know, I'll do the promotion, I'll do the other sort of stuff, but don't ask me to go in there and do whatever if I'm not ready to be in that mode. Yeah. And right now he's fully on boxer mode, and with good reason. I oh, mean, it, the dude, the sky's he's the limit the for him right now. Just the two biggest stars in the heavyweight division, which is crazy. What if, what if, what if he gets? And uh, you know, I'm not saying that I'm predicting this, but what if he does get just like sparked out by Anthony Joshua, yeah. right? Then you know, if it turns out maybe that. Tyson Fury was just that one magic night. You know, Fury had a bad night. You had your best night. You still came up short, but you did put on an amazing show. We all said yeah. it was amazing, even in, in defeat. Do you think if he just gets absolutely sparked somehow that the, the the entry goes completely away for boxing? Do you think people still would want to see a Fury rematch? Or maybe there's some other names that are thrown out there. Do you think people would I still want to see, see boxing? Names. Yeah, because I think the Tyson Fury all – it, you know, it's because it, it, the the ball's in Fury's court right now with that particular thing. Like, yeah. Fury would have to ask for it at that point and be like, okay, you know, I want to write that, you know, that story and let's mm-hmm. do this again. Um, I think they're still intrigued because I think there's still other fighters that something can be because he's still, you know, he's still losing to, like, one of the best guys in the world, True. you know. And even if he goes out there and he doesn't look at all like what we think he can be and he – I just, I just can't see in my head that even if he just was like, I'm gonna drop my hands and go on, Anthony. I'm gonna give you a couple shots. I still don't see him knocking him out, but maybe it could happen. Maybe it could happen. I just, I don't see him um, getting finished early. I see that you know, because there's gonna be Anthony's got to give um, Francis respect for the power. So I think the first round or two, it's gonna be a lot of feeling out section, and then as the round, say we get into the third round, Francis at his mind's got to be like. 
here we are in the third round. I'm I'm with the best in the world, and it's the third round. I can do this, you know. And I mean, he took some power from Fury. He did, you know. It wasn't like he didn't feel, you know, a strong punch, yeah. you know. So, dude, I, I, you know, I'm I'm willing to let myself. <laughs> Homer for the MMA yeah. guy this time. Like other times, it was like, no, all right, this is silly, this is silly. But I'm gonna Homer for him this one. I I, I, I want to see him lay some hands on Joshua and test Joshua's chin, and I want to see how he takes Joshua's punches. And at this point, I mean, I don't need to see him back in MMA. I'm enjoying watching him do what he's doing against the boxers, you know. So I, I'm just glad to get to see him fight. And I, I he's one of these rare athletes that you know when we you know. Say it's a say it's a flash in the pan, you know. Yep. Say it's a flash in the pan. I feel lucky that we're able to see one of these guys that's been able to his story, what he's been able to rise and do for himself in the the MMA sphere, and then to be able to cross over and what he's being able to do in boxing. It's fantastic. I it feel cool. I feel he's he's one of these really unique, cool stories that I'm glad in our lifetime that we've got to see this particular character and his oh, story yeah. kind of come out. So even if it's a short. Uh, time in boxing and say he makes the money he's like guys i had a great now i'm just going to go be a promotional you know spokesperson and i'm done fighting i'll i'll feel glad that we got to see these moments of him you know um do it because i think he's just a rare athlete you know he's got charisma he's he's a he's just a beast he's scary but he's like the nicest guy ever he's like a freak of nature and uh yeah man i'm just you know i'm, in, I'm enjoying it so i'm willing to like i'm willing to root for the dude because I want his story to either keep going or just end on a high note. And I'm That's just awesome. happy for what he's been able to do. You know what's cool is – well, I, I say cool. It's, well, you know, I think it'll work out for you too. So it's next week. Obviously, it's Friday. Um, Friday, March the 8th is when the fight is. The card starts – I'm looking at the zone right now. The card starts at 7 a.m. Pacific. So that's 10 a.m. Eastern. You and I will both be in Miami next week yeah. uh, for UFC 299. I've actually got CFSC that week as well. So – for you, you'll be at the pay, you'll be at the weigh-ins, the official weigh-ins when it starts. But the official weigh-ins will be done by the time he fights. So I bet you're going to be able to catch it in the middle of the afternoon before the ceremonial weigh-ins. And for me, um, I'll actually be able to watch it in the morning before I do CFFC 130, which is in Tampa uh, on Friday night and uh, on USC Fight Pass. So that's awesome, dude. Like, cause I there's gonna be a lot of people distracted waiting about that, waiting for that fight. Yeah, man. I look forward to Dude, that. It's, it's, it's Get to gonna, watch it's an and then two nine nine on Saturday. Like yeah. so that's what a what a, what a weekend that's gonna be. I mean, as much as people might, you know, I know some people in the boxing thing, I know sometimes get, you know, like, oh, we're tired of these crossover things, but even the boxers have to be ex the boxing media, the boxing fans have to be excited. If you have a, a champ, you have a, this beast of a guy in Anthony Joshua that's just destroyed people, seeing the guy going against the guy that people have called the scariest man in MMA, the scariest, baddest man on the planet, you got to be excited for your guy to go out there and represent. So, I mean, like, these fights, I mean, like, I'm more excited for this particular fight than I've been for a lot of the main events of, wow. like, these MMA ones. Just because there's so much, um, just a lot right on it. We finally have a guy that can do it. We finally have one. We've had many guys cross over into the thing, and we keep we get our heart hurt. So <laughs> get the just like heart broke over and over and over. We now have an athlete that's like, okay, we can hang our hat on. But like, okay, this is our dude. Like, go out there and do some stuff, you know. And he's got a great story, and he's a good. He's got good people around him. I mean, like his whole team, the the, the management team, and uh, you know Marcel and all the cats that are around him, the, and his coaches. He's just a good guy and a good team. So you want to see good things, yeah. but. I'm glad that we finally have an MMA guy that we're like, yes. It's awesome. Our guy's going to go do some shit. You I'm know? looking forward to it. We will be watching that next Friday. Uh, we'll probably talk about it next Wednesday. We will figure that all out next week because we've got a crazy week. We've all got a lot of travel going on. So maybe that's another one we'll do on Thursday. I don't know. We'll figure that one I mean, out. When you think about it, you know, sorry, just the last thing. He's 37 years old. Yeah. How long do you people think he's going to stay in the MMA? You're fighting for BFL, do you? I mean, I'd be, if, if he doesn't fight for – PFL this year and he goes into 38 and he's making money, I don't think it's going to happen. Mm. Unless it's one last final pay thing. But I just don't think... If he wins, you're right. If he, we, if we've he wins... we waiting for the, this if magical he wins, he's setup. Never... We, we wanted this magical setup, this super fight series. And it was just like... It, it As much as I love the scariness about it, it, it doesn't do... It's not like a legacy fight. I mean, what is it, what's the legacy? He, okay, we came over to PFL and he took the belt. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. No, it's true. 
cool. It's true. If he beats Hennon Fajeda, nobody's going to give me I'd any credit whatsoever. I'd rather fight Tyson Fury again. You know, oh. I mean, I, I can see where my PFL people are like, fuck you, we want, <laughs> we all want to be the champ of our thing or whatever, but it's like, I want him to make the most money while I can. Dude's 37 years old. Doesn't like, have he's a lot maybe, of time he's, left. He's got maybe two years. He's not going to – I've never heard him say, you know – you know, I can't wait till I can get my 40s. I'm going to really hit my prime, and I'm ready to keep going. No, I mean, like, he's about trying to be that life, you know, and, and doing big things. And I think the PFL Africa part is going to be that change. Oh, I think that that'll sustain, yeah. You know, and that's going to be that big thing because then he's going to make money doing that sort of thing. But I, I guarantee by the time – I would be surprised if he's still fighting in two years' time because of the amount of money that he's making and what he's already set up for himself to do, he doesn't need to. Yep. After this fight, he doesn't need to. Like, this is good. Like, the brother's good, you know? And then just go into management, brother. <laughs> go in there and be an executive. Yep. Go make your PFL money, but you don't need to get in the cage. And, and is the PFL going to be like, no, you have to fight? No, because they, they're going to want to continue to do business with him as head of PFL Africa. And in France, he'll be one of the biggest stars in the world. And, he's already his, his star is shooting through the roof right now. It's ridiculous. And, and P- Pete Murray is a pretty smooth talker. Boy, it'd be yeah. really easy for him to be like, oh, we were excited about him fighting for us, but – you know he's doing bigger things now. You know those yep. competitive days. Have got, look at what he it. accomplished in boxing. That is un- this is unprecedented. Thanks to us, Thanks Thanks to- <laughs> us letting him do this. <laughs> you know, and think about and, and think about all the money we saved. On. Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I'm, I did not mean that. Not I did not. Whoa, that hey, I did not. We mean actually it. profited for the year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, UFC Fight Night 238 is this weekend. As we said, I think we kind of went into media day today going, ah, what's this going to be about? But honestly, I thought it was kind of fun. I mean, the main event, Charzino Rosenstrike, Shamil Gaziev. Um, you, Sh- got, you got him to crack a smile Shamil everything. was smiling. Yeah, I was oh, like, he was holy like, he was like oh, I'm usually pretty giddy, man. I'm just a little hungry right now. Like, who knew <laughs> Shamil? He got jokes, man. But, yeah, uh, yeah we got him going. And Charzino, honestly – I feel like Jorginho is really opening up a little bit. His his past interviews, I always felt like his media days were kind of a struggle just because he was just like, yep, nope, yep, that's going to be good. And you're like, yep. uh, and would you care yeah. to expand? It was, like, it was like pulling teeth to get him to really talk. So I thought the main event today was was uh, was really good. Um, listen, I you know, it's it, it's a it's a, it's a tough match. I mean, Shamil looks every bit the real deal. Uh, he looks like he is going to be a real problem in this division moving forward. Whether or not that's going to be right now, I guess we're going to find out. I mean, Jairzinho hits hard. There's no doubt about it. So um, if anybody can catch him and, and put his lights out, it can certainly be that. Jairzinho said coming in, he fully expects him to try to wrestle. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I took a look at the odds. Shamil, the favorite, around a minus 165. I'm not, not su- I'm not surprised with that. Not I'll bad. be honest with you. I thought it was gonna be bigger. I thought people I thought people would be favoring Shamil. And I think maybe it's simply because he's so new to the division that maybe people don't have And that O. It's yeah. The, the O the O carries a lot. Man. But I th- I thought he'd be a bigger favorite to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I thought he would be. So yeah. I, I I don't know. Um I, I, I like I, the fight. I, I like the fight. I like the fight. People I mean, granted, we say this all the time, people shitting on Apex cards. People were shitting on this heavyweight fight. Like they thought it was just gonna be a bunch of stinkers. And yeah. like and I don't feel that that is worth it's not being fair to the what these guys are going to bring. And as I said, I, it was my hot take, my MMA hot take the other day. The heavyweights do better in the apex. They perform better Got in the apex. Got that smaller cage. And, and it has to partially be that. It has to be. And, but also, too, to sometimes, sometimes with heavyweights, um, as big and as much as we put on these guys, we expect them to be bold and brash. A lot of these big heavyweights aren't. Yeah. They're kind of quiet people, and they yeah. kind of like the quietness of hearing their coaches going out there and not having this big, crazy crowd. There's a few of them. There's a few of the big ones that love the crowd, but sometimes these heavyweights just want to get in there, yep. throw hands, go home, or celebrate because, with their team. Well, you know, you know, and it's funny you say that because, you know, you think about it. In MMA, we, we know what the fear is, right? Like every fighter is like, I could go out there and get knocked the hell out. Yeah. If you're a heavyweight, like yeah. you know you could get knocked the yeah. hell out. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm sure there is a little bit more tension for those guys. And especially when they got a huge crowd. Like, I don't want to go out there and get starched and knocked out in yeah. front of, you know, 18,000 people. About, I just feel like there's less pressure on they, – they feel like a lot of times like they're more at ease. So we get a better performance from them. And with the smaller cage – 
there's less there's less footage. It's not like their guys are doing a lot of running anyways, well, but it kind of forces you in I, the middle. I was going to say maybe the uh, the undiscussed uh, real benefit is it's a much shorter walk to the cave. So they, they don't, <laughs> so they don't get gassed. <laughs> they don't, I was going to say they don't, gas out, they don't gas out on the 10-foot <laughs> wall. Hey, man, you know, from a T-Mobile Arena, man, they got to come from backstage. They got to go all the way down the floor. I'm telling you, there's a lot, that's a lot of room for <laughs> nerves and a lot of other stuff to distract you. I don't know. So, they, yeah, that was my hot nah, take of this week. That is a hot But I think it's – Did you throw that out on, uh, on Twitter? Twitter. Oh, on Twitter? Okay, I thought maybe you uh, popped but in and spinning back click or something like that. I was, just like, like, I was just like, you know, like, it, it's, it's, it's the beginning of the fight week, so here's my funny hot take, and I actually put a little funny gif with it or whatever, but I just, when you go back and you look at some of the recent heavyweight fights that have happened at the Apex, they're finishes. They're like knockouts. They're submissions or other sort of stuff. Sure, there's probably some stinkers that maybe have sneaked their way through, but I just feel that heavyweights go in there, they're more relaxed because of the environment, it's a smaller cage, and they just tend to – we tend to get finishes. And I think this is going to be another one of those fights where we're going to get a finish. That being said, I probably just jinxed the universe because I just went really hard in on it. Um, but I like this fight. I, and I like the character and I like this fight. You know, they, you got a guy that's trying to really show that he is a dangerous guy that needs to pay attention. And I feel like Jarzino is the guy that's like, I'm still relevant. You know, I I, I have to show I'm still relevant if I want to still sort of maintain my place in the division and and, And, and to have the potential to get back into contender race. He's he's got to get through this. Said he's been focusing on his grappling, you know, and like that's really been his, and he needs to. He does. You know, but, you know, and he raised a good point. You know, he he said, I think, I think Shamil's going to go in there and he's going to try to go immediately take a takedown. That sets up areas where his striking can go. But Jarzino's chin's been tested. In the past, we've seen we've seen him fall, you know, and it'd be interesting to see how uh, Shamil takes some shots on his on his chin as well, because Jarzino is definitely going to give it to him. So I'm excited. I mean, there's definitely areas where, um, you know, this could play out to be a good fight. And I just hate when people are like, "Oh man, this, this is the perfect fight for an apex." I'm like, "What the fuck does that mean?" <laughs> What does that mean? You just sound like an asshole. Like, when people are like, oh, man, we're never going to get these drunken crowds like in Mexico. I'm like, what are you watching for? <laughs> are you literally just I watching just for see the crowd? crowd fights? You just want crowd fights? I'm like, bro, just go to a regional. Go to regional <laughs> MMA, and you'll see your crowd fights. And it's just – it's so – dis. I don't know. I, I don't want to feel like I'm the UFC champ – the Apex champion defending it. But I'm like – I'm just – you know, and I've said it before. What are you really watching for? Because if you're watching the, as if the fighters are saying, "I like it" or "I'm fine with it," cool. If the fighters says, "I hate fighting at the apex," fuck, let's get them on a different card. Right. But that's not for us as the fans to sit back and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna poo poo on this guy well, because I, I think look I, because of the apex." We said number know? one, a the, the apex is very convenient for us, so we like. There's there's oh, no question that we yeah, like. I'm gonna lie about that. that. Yeah, it's <laughs> super convenient for us, so we definitely have some bias to it. But I will agree with you that look, I, I get it, right? There's something iconic about a huge knockout and a guy scales the cage and there's 18,000 people around going crazy. It's like, ah, like that's a moment. But guess what? You know, there's something iconic about Super Bowls because they're Super Bowls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not every, not everything is like that. You know what I mean? Right. So it's not like everyone. So I don't know. By the way, you Jif, I, I did go to Twitter uh, to see what Jif you had. <laughs> not the one I was expecting. I don't know. When, when it was like, that's my hot take for the day, I was thinking maybe like the one where it's like, uh, what is it? Is it Grover that's like standing in front of the flames yeah. or whatever? Like that's the one I was expecting to see. Well, but is this is it Tim Kardashian? Yeah, is that, is that it's, more, it's more tongue in cheek, like peering, like he peeking around, like, like okay, like ah. are you gonna are you gonna get it? Are you gonna get it? Because I, I mean, I said it's lighthearted. Like obviously, if I if I was if I was gonna die on on that cross and be like, guys. Heavyweight should only fight in the apex because right, trust right. me, they fight better. You're just throwing it out there. I'm just, just like, little, hey, you know, maybe a little troll, maybe a little yeah, troll. It's just, it's just a little, a little tea. It's just Kardashian. Did you troll. did you know the GIF that you were going to use, or did you like? No, I did a search, and then I'll, when because I, I saw different ones. What did that, you search for? Uh, peering. Peering. All right. Yeah, like you know. Yeah. Like, I have actually. No, can you search for a GIF in Twitter? Yeah, that's why I did. You just like hit the like video and then like you, yeah, add like the the cloud thing or whatever or the picture thing or there's a gif and you can search it right in there just search right in there yeah yeah that is that is your old man tech tip for the day (laughs) i had no (laughs) no idea i was gonna say yeah that that would be like me to like let me do a search for a gif and then they copy the code and then Uh, paste it in. that is i appreciate that information uh one other thing while i've got you on tech talk my vcr (laughs) is flashing 12 do you know any way to uh (laughs) you anyway (laughs) Well, Did you hold, the, correct the, that? hold the power button down, and then you unplug it, and then you, so funny. you count to 30. There's some of you new fans of sport, you're like, a VCR flashing 12. What does that even mean, oh, boy? Oh, 
We know. That's that's when we knew old. that our parents didn't know what they were doing and they were getting old. Uh, co-main event, Vitor <laughs> Petrino and Tyson Pedro. Um, man, fireworks, banger. Uh, this this is going to be explosive. Um I, I, I like this one. I think it's a. I think it's a, a bit of a toss up. I mean, Petrino looks like the real deal. Yeah. Pedro is the real deal as well. Um, a little bit more experienced. Obviously, he's had some ups and downs. Petrino undefeated. Uh, huge favorite, by the way, as well. I'm a Dude, little bit surprised he, to see that. A, but he's a beast, man. He's we've, a tank, what, man. What we've seen him go in there and do from the contender series, and when he's come, uh, boy, I mean. Tyson is tough as nails. I mean, like, he's got a lot of heart. He's got good power, and I think people sometimes underestimate him, and maybe that's to the downfall of some of his opponents. I don't think Vitor's going to do that. And, man, he's just – Petrino's power is just scary. Scary. Dude. I, I picked him on this one. Uh, I, I, I think I, it's uh, – It's hard to pick against Tyson Pedro. It's hard we love, we love, love Tyson dude. Pedro. I love that dude, man. I just feel, man, there's some – I mean, both the guys had to travel to get here, but man, such a long travel to come over, and I just feel like we haven't seen Tyson in a while. And the last time we saw him, he did look good, but man, um, he's just not. He's doesn't seem to be the same guy that we saw when he was making that splash when he first came in. When we were just like, he was just running through dudes, and he, I think, he even said that today too. I think he's like, that was me at one point. Yeah, you know, I was running through dudes. I thought that I was had, interesting that he did, he said that that yeah. was me at one point. I was the guy that was tearing through everybody. Like, I mean, it's hard to not acknowledge that, you know, like the 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 similarities between the two. So maybe there's something about it. But I mean, there is some self realization there. That's like. He's not the same guy that he was back then when he was maybe I want to say carefree, but just maybe felt more invincible. You know, at that time he was just had all the bits and the belief, and maybe now he's just more of a he understands the game more. He's not gonna you know um, blind himself with his own you know my shit I can my shit don't stink. I'm the baddest thing out there. Like he understands and he can't get dropped. He can't get knocked out. But man, it's gonna be a tough one. Um, but again, that's one that man, if it does go the way I think it is, it's gonna be hard to watch because I love. Pedro, but man, that'd be really cool if, if Tyson could pull something out. That would be a huge, huge win against a guy that has everything to be a potential champion at some point. My recommendation on this one, if you're going to be betting it, is to not bet it until you're ready for the event. Let's live bet it and let's see if Tyson Pedro walks out to sexual. And if he does, <laughs> if you hear it. <laughs> Well, he da, wins da, our hearts da, if he does. Da, da, then at that point, you go put your money down on him. Because he didn't do it on the last one. No, he? He, I think he came out to something different. That's why I'm saying he's got to yeah. go back. To, I mean, I mean, he won last one. I think one, we so brought that up to him once. We yeah, said, and like, he's like, I'm done. And yeah. he's like, done. And we're like, he's well, like, it, it wasn't that's why you're losing, bro. He's like, it wasn't that great. Yes, it was. Remember that one time when you walked out with that one song? That was awesome. Uh, all right. Um, Mohamed Mokayev and Alex Perez. Interesting fight here as well that I think took on a little bit more added meaning today, at least for me. I thought it was a big fight already, but uh, Alex Perez, of course, man, the, the dude is snake bit. And, and he is the nicest human being on the planet. He takes it so well. He's had all these fight cancellations. It is important to note that not all of them have been his fault. A lot of them have been his fault, but not all of them has been his fault. So people try to hold that against them. I get it. Um, but again, they're not all him. But Mohamed Mokayev... You know, he's had this buzz around him the whole time. He's he's had the build up, the undefeated record. He's had some performances that maybe everybody didn't love, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but he kind of laid it out there where, you know, after last week in Mexico City, I think we all thought, oh wow, Brandon Royval, Alexander Patoja, that's the title fight in in Brazil. But it turns out it looks like Royval has torn a ligament in his knee, and if if that's the case, I don't think he's gonna be ready for May. And Mokayev kind of laid it out there, right? He's like, well, look. He's like, Royval's hurt. Moreno just lost. Albazi's hurt. Kai Car France is recovering from a, a, a concussion. He's like, because he was supposed to fight me and he wasn't available because he wasn't. He's like, cop just missed weight. You, you know, so guess what? I just went through all the names up there, and now that leaves me. And if I win this fight, I'll be ready. And, and I said, you know, I hear there's a, a, a fight in Brazil in May. And he's like, 10 weeks from now. I'm like, oh, so you've already, you know, he's, he, I, <laughs> yeah. I look. I don't think it's impossible. I, I, I think this I think this fight They've took on a little bit more significant. That, Pinto, you know? They you know, we know that uh Alex Pajeda was supposed to headline three oh one. They pulled him three hundred. They need a headliner in Brazil. They haven't announced a headliner in Brazil. You gotta think it's be gonna be Pantoja as a champion. And if Mokayev wins this fight impressively, I think it's him. I mean, when you lay out the case like that, especially when you when you need to have a name and if everybody's tied up and if the logical guys are either injured or just not ready to turn around for that, why not? Because yep. you got I, – I agree. You need, a, you need a Brazilian or something. 
I mean, I can't think of anybody else that's even available to put on. They were that's what they wanted. Um, well, let's pay it for. Pay it yep. for, yeah. And yep. it's like so that was your big card. So like, yeah, it makes a hundred percent, you know, sense that it would be Pantoja. And I mean, but he's got to well, one, he's got to win this fight. I did pick him over Perez, but you almost want a guy if he's going to leapfrog that many people. Um, you would think it needs to be pretty spectacular because, you know, it's not like I'm feeling the heat that you're like, oh, I have to see that right. matchup. But when you go down that line, you're like, well, nobody else is available, yo. Nobody and else they got to have somebody. Yeah, then why not? Bring it on. That's a that's a good matchup, though. Uh, Umar Nurmagomedov is back. A lot of people have their sights on him. Bexat Amakan, the newcomer, the Kazakh with the impressive record, is the opponent. Um, I'll say this. Um, have you seen, By the way, have you seen the odds on this one? No. Nah. Umar is minus two. 1,400. Oh. Uh, so Bex that stepping yeah. in is a huge underdog here. But, yeah. uh, boy, so we found out, number one, he flew in from Kazakhstan because he just got his visa uh, yesterday. So he flew 20 hours yesterday to get here. Uh, so there's going to be some jet lag. There's no question about it. Uh, but I will say this. A dude that is coming in and facing a ranked opponent, a highly respected ranked opponent, you know, on short notice in his UFC debut, that dude was relaxed, man. He was yeah. he was smiling. He was feeling good. He was like, you know, saying the right things, I guess. He's like, why would I feel pressure? I'm a fighter. This is what I do. You know, he's got two arms, two legs, one head, like, you know, I, I, whatever. Uh, saying the right things. Uh, easier said than done, I guess, maybe to, to get uh, done. Uh, we see what the odds makers think. Uh, of course, I favor Umar as well, but... I don't know. It seems to me like the guy's at least coming in with the right attitude. That like, yeah. hey, I'm a fighter. I don't care who this guy is. I don't care about reputation. I'm in. Yeah. I think he's he's just making the most of the moment, you know? I mean, Octagon uh, fights have put on, like, they put on some pretty decent size, yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, events. So, I mean, he's he's seen bells and whistles at events and stuff. So, it should be interesting. But, yeah, I think he's probably just chalking up to the fact of, like, he's living his dream. He just got to fly to Vegas you know, and now he's stepping in. He's got a main card. So, I mean, he's probably just like – it's almost, you know, it's so quick that it's like he can't take the brevity of what it really means because it's just – it's coming probably so fast. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he looked absolutely relaxed. I just He looked like a guy that, you know, felt like he was just thankful and just taken in the moment, you mm-hmm. know. And, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I liked I liked his, his uh, at ease, his personality and stuff. So – should be interesting. Um, I did pick him to lose, but I do I like the, don't think you'll be alone in that decision. <laughs> but it, I just enjoyed talking to him today. It just yeah. seemed like he, he came in that's relaxed. A tough, that's a tough. That's a tough first one to get. Yeah, that's a tough. That, ass. That's a tough debut. That's a tough ask out the gate. Uh, yeah. All right, listen. Uh, Eleven fight card. It did lose some fights along the way. Thank you know, bummer goodness. there, but. <laughs> Yeah, nobody's UFC complaining about a lemon fight card. I mean, they've been trying to do like some of these, like let's cram some fights in, like these 13, 14 fight cards. It's like stop. So now it's like, ele- oh, cool, only eleven. I'll take eleven awesome. all day, you know? all day. And by the way, ten thirty a.m. start yes. here in Las Vegas. Uh, so one p.m. for the main card. Uh, yeah. We're gonna leave, and it's still gonna be daylight outside. I, I'm sorry. I try to keep it because there's a submission stuff going on after that. So it's, it's almost like they're like before we're out of the building, the submission stuff is gonna be going. But the, on. But the event's the next night. Is it? I, no, 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 like no, the, the, no. Nope. Sunday night. Is it Sunday night? Yeah, okay. it's Sunday night. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, no, but there will be like weigh-ins and stuff like that. Maybe but that's yeah, what yeah. it was. The UFC Fight Pass Invitational is on Sunday night as well. Um, so, so you gotta stop combining that shit on the PR screen, the sheet, the same one because it's just confusing. Just get confusing like, to just, you. It's an event. It's a different event. Stop. It'll <laughs> happen on Sunday night. So uh, be sure and check that out. Uh, and be sure and check out. Remember, early, early time. And uh, yeah, I mean, trust me, I, I, I like the early start times. I just love you know just wake up and roll straight over and, and go into a fight. So. Shoot. Four o'clock, rolling out of there. Like, thank you. Can't beat it. Uh, worth mentioning as well, by the way. Uh, one championship this weekend. Uh, they are coming strong on, on their card. For, it's not. It's not one of the cards that's um, that's prime time. It's not the Amazon. Prime. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not prime time. Um, but it's it's absolutely loaded. It's Friday morning, so if you want to check it out, uh, you can ch- you can get the links on the one uh, FC page. Um, but it's going to be 7.30 a.m. Eastern, so 4.30 a.m. Pacific, a little bit early for us here on this side of the country. But if you're on the east side of the country, and by the way, but you know, if you're, if you're on Pacific time, the main card is really what you're looking at. There's uh, four title fights at the top of the card. This is absolutely loaded. 
Uh, Rainer de Ritter is back against Anatoly Malikin, which, I mean, that's a, a big fight every time they get together. Tang Kai and Tan Lee is there, which should be a hell of a lot of fun there. Featherweight unification vouch. Jared Brooks is back in action against Joshua Pascio. I love Jared Brooks. I think he's a guy that gets constantly uh, overlooked, to be honest with you, man. He's a talented, talented dude. He talks a lot of shit, um, which is funny. Uh, and he's, he's an entertaining cat. I like him a lot. I'm a fan. So uh, that one's worth watching. And Arjan Bueller is back as well against Amir Ali Akbari in a uh, heavyweight fight there. So um, some big fights up at the top of the card. Uh, so definitely, if, you, if you're if you up on Friday morning, um, look for that because that's going to be, uh, you know, sometimes they go a little heavy on, on Muay Thai or kickboxing for some people's life. They even Some people don't like the submission grappling. I disagree with you folks, but, uh, I you know, I get it, whatever. Um, this is MMA, and it's uh, it's going to be one of their big, big, big cards, big productions. Uh, so definitely worth checking out there. I think it's worth it. So uh, big weekend this weekend and big weekend next weekend as well. UFC 299, as I said, we'll both be out there. Um, I've actually got CFFC 130 on, in, on Friday night in Tampa, so we'll talk about that sometime next week. Uh, but it's going to be fun. So I'm going to do Thursday in Miami for the press conference, Friday in Tampa for the fights, back to Miami on Saturday for the fights, and then home on Sunday. So, so you have no time to go to Mike's Dive Bar. I don't. Because you, you leave Thursday? You get in Thursday? I mean, unless we go post-fight on Saturday. I don't know what time we go. Oh, we'll be no, going we, way too late. Yeah, it'll be too late. I mean, we Sucks to be can, can roll in hot to the press conference. Just <laughs> <laughs> something to talk about. Something to talk about. Yeah, maybe we'll do Thursday as well, depending on uh, if there's nothing going on. Because I get in – I'm actually flying in late Wednesday night, so I get in early Thursday morning. Like what time Wednesday? Uh, I'm leaving 7.30 p.m. on Friday night, and I'm stopping in Phoenix. And I get in at oh, 6.03 Miami local time early. So maybe – Oh, we'll go Wednesday night then. Maybe we'll do uh, – no, 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 I'll leave – I'm taking a red eye. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mike's is legit. Mike's is fun. <laughs> Mike's is a fun little dive bar. We we found the one dive bar in Miami, yeah. and it is divey. It, it is. is it's one. It's it's one of those ones where it takes you about two drinks to get over like the smell. aroma. <laughs> I just got that. I, I, yeah, I didn't know. There's no nice way to say it. It don't yeah. smell pleasant. It smells in there. like a dive bar. It smells like a dive bar. Uh, the crickety it smells like a dive bar, but feels like home. <laughs> feels like home. The crickety uh, uh, elevator as you get up yes. there. Like if you're walking in there and it's already dark outside and, this, and you've never been there before, you're pretty sure you're gonna get shot on the way in. <laughs> Uh, but it's the only affordable drinks it's very cheap. in, in uh, Miami. So, yeah. What, Fantastic. Maybe, we'll have to make something happen. Or, or I mean. What's a trip to Miami? Like? I mean. Going there. I, I mean, maybe maybe what we do is we stop by there on Thursday prior to the press conference. We take <laughs> the podcast there. But, of course, of course, no alcoholic beverages. Yeah, we would just have, sense. you know that what I mean, sense. just have some waters. Yeah. Uh, maybe do a little Bible study and get ready. Uh, oh, well, then I'm, I'm all in. You're all in? I'm all in. <laughs> in. You had me right there. <laughs> we might be rolling it out. We'll see. All right. But we'll figure that all out next week. Uh, we'll have a and a half episode uh, after this week, so it'll be probably a little earlier than normal since it's an earlier than normal uh, card. So uh, we'll certainly have that. So thank you to everybody that supports us over at patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. We certainly do appreciate that. If you can't do us uh, the favor of supporting us over there, if you could just do a second to rate us, review us, uh, leave some feedback, tell tell your friends about us, whatever it can be, it can be, all that stuff helps us out. But more than anything, if it's warm like it is here in Las Vegas, go outside and enjoy the damn weather because that's what we're about to that's do. It's time to go. It's time to go enjoy this weather. Thanks for listening.